Thank you, Jesus. Come on, open up your mouth and thank him right now. Thank him right now. Thank him right now. We must believe to see and not believe, not see to believe the goodness of the Lord. God is a good God. Come on, you got 30 more seconds to get it out. Get it out. Get it out. Get out your thanksgiving to him. Come on, give it out. Get it out. Thank you, Jesus. He's good. He's good. He's good. He's good. Thank you, Jesus. I know you got your mask on, but open up your mouth and give him some glory. Give him some glory. Give him some glory. Give him some glory. Open up your mouth and give him some glory. still believe in God still trust him you still love him you still going to praise him are you still going to worship him yes God bless you you may be seated in the presence of the Lord thank you so much a king brother king minister king for gracing us with that song Thank you, thank you so much. God bless you all. God bless you all. Give us a few minutes of a thought that God has placed on my heart. Amen. Back and forth with different topics and different thoughts, but it's still going to be centered around God giving you strength. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to read one verse of 73rd Psalms. Brother David, seventy Psalm 73 and one verse and the 26th verse. David said, my flesh and my heart fainted. Faileth. But God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Look at Psalms 27. I have to go there. Have to go there. There's so many areas, so many verses that I can pull out of the Psalms, but I want to read this. Look at what David said, Psalms 27 and 13. He said, I had fainted unless I believed to see the what? The goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Finally, he said, wait on the Lord and do what? Be of good courage and he shall what? Read that again. Wait on the Lord and be of good courage, and he shall do what? Strengthen thy heart. I'm sorry. Wait, I say, on the Lord. God bless you. You may be seated. I still believe God. And it's your moment sometimes, and when you... At your weakest moments, that's when you can see the strength of God. But strange enough, it seems like it doesn't work together, but sometimes, in fact, the Bible says when you're weak, he'll do what? He'll make you strong. And if you're not careful, sometimes even when you feel like you're weak, 
you feel like God is not moving, but God is moving even through your weakness. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. We fear things. We fear uh, the shadow of death. We fear problems. Come on. We fear problems. We trials and tribulations. We try to run from them. And sometimes it's good that you can. You may be able to escape. Sometimes you may not be able to escape problems, right? But even with that fear that envelops us, that fear that ultimately try to impress or try to, to imprison us, even within ourselves, we have to fight back. Am I right, Mother White? We got to fight back. We have to fight back. We have to fight back. The doubt, we have to fight back the uncertainty, Brother King. We got to fight back even within ourselves. We all struggle with that, that uncertainty. Come on, am I talking? Each one of us have been in a uh, prisoner of fear. Each one of us have dealt with rejection. At some point, you have dealt with misunderstanding. Somebody may not understand who you are. Some of us have dealt with uncertainty. We have dealt with sickness. We have dealt with even face with death. Somebody heard, um, I hear so many testimonies where the doctors have given up on them and called the family in and all of these time, things, making the final preparations. But God turned it around. Come on, somebody. So when these things happen, when we are faced with all of these uncertainties, these uh, even if we look at what's going on even in the world, if it, it, it will sap your strength. It will drain you. It will pull you down emotionally. And, uh, it, and as strange as it is, it may not be a bad place to be in because when you find out, when you've exhausted all of everything that you have, then you can lean on God and he will lift you up. Amen. Then we sing that song, You Are My Strength. I want you to get back to the words. Strength like no other. Do he lifts me up. He lifts me up. Come on, that's what it says, right? In other words, even in your weakest moment, God will show you his strength. He will show you his power. Do I have a witness in here today? So every time that you're in a weak moment is not always a bad thing because it lets you know that within yourself, I don't have the strength. Within myself, I don't even have the, the fortitude. But then when I lean on God's word, and when I trust him, and when I count, when I look at what David says, listen, I look at the, what he said in his text, he said, I had fainted unless I believed. That means he's at a weak moment. Don't know about you all. You may not never been to him in a weak moment. And if you haven't, keep on living. And if you're strong today, don't worry about it. Tomorrow or the next day may catch you at a vulnerable moment when you feel like there's no strength. Have you ever felt like sometimes not even getting up out of the bed to even go to work? Do I have any witnesses? Yeah, some of y'all don't feel like going to work tomorrow, and it ain't even got here. <laughs> you excited about going to work tomorrow? Not all the time. But then you have to find out what brings you strength and rest, and what brings you comfort, rest. And then God will give you the strength that you need. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Even in your weakest moment, even in your, 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 uh, your vulnerable time, God will step in right when you need him. Do I have a witness? Yeah. And you look back and you say, where did that strength come? It wasn't nobody but the Lord. Where did that energy come from? It wasn't from the, the fruit loops. It wasn't from the, the, the wheat checks. I'm dating myself now. We don't have wheat checks no more, do they? They still have Captain Crunch. It wasn't none of from all the weeds and <laughs> It wasn't even from your vitamins. There's something that's on the inside of you that God will give you strength. Reverend Saul, that you say, wait a minute, where did that come from? That comes from God. 
Come on, somebody. David said, listen, I would have fainted unless I believed the goodness of the Lord. In other words, I had to remind myself. Every now and then we have to remind ourselves of our testimony. We got to remind ourselves of where God has brought us from. Do I have any witnesses? Sometimes when you're going through a weak moment at that time, my brothers and my sisters, you can't even find a testimony. You have to go back and remind yourself what God has already done for you. Then when you can say, when I look back over my life and I think things over, I can say I'm really blessed. In other words, I would have been faint. I would have faint. But I, when I start thinking of the goodness of the Lord and what he's done for me in the land of the living, when I had no strength, when I had no hope, when I had no, no, no fortitude, it was God that brought you up. Song said he do what? He lifts me up. He, and it repeat, he lifts me up. Somebody say hallelujah. Yes, I would have fainted. I would have fallen. I would have fell down. But then he said, he said, lest I believe the goodness of the Lord. And, and then all he did say, wait on the Lord. That wait means doing what? Be patient. Come on, somebody. He's coming. He's coming. He's going to turn it around for you. Wait on the Lord. And while you're waiting, trust him with all your heart. And don't lean to your own understanding. Come on, somebody. But in all your ways, do what? Acknowledge him. Even when you're weak, and he shall give you strength. He will bring it back to you. Say, wait on the, good, the Lord and be of what? Good courage. And who's going to strengthen you? He shall strengthen thine heart. There's nothing like a strength from God. There's nothing like the encouragement from God. He gives you. He gives you. You remember who was that? Elijah wasn't going. He was, Elijah what got, got up under that juniper tree and wasn't going to preach no more. And the angels, you know, that was Elijah, wasn't it? Come. And he got, he give up. He wasn't going to preach no more. And the angels come to him and gave him, say, listen, you got to get up from here. You got to get up from here. Give him bread and water and give him another, enough strength for the journey. Come on, somebody. I said, he'll give you strength for the journey. Y'all don't know it, but you be, you ain't got to stay under that tree. You ain't got to stay down too long. He's going to come. He's going to send an angel to give you the strength that you need. Come on, somebody. He's going to give his angels a charge for you right there where you are. And then you can realize and recognize it's nobody but God that's going to give me the strength that I believe, that I need. Even in the darkest moment, even in the shadow, darkness, and when you feel the fear of rejection and all of these things, we can conquer these things by having the strength of God in our lives. If we want to dispel darkness and fear, we got to remember what he's brought us from. We want to dispel darkness and fear, we got to remember and remind God of his words. Come on, somebody. Tell God, say, wait a minute, Lord. You say you are my shepherd, you are my light and my salvation. Listen, you said I shouldn't fear. Yeah, the Lord is the strength of my life and whom shall I be afraid. David understood. He said, no matter what I'm going through, no matter what problems I'm dealing with, he said, listen, 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 even the wicked may come and my enemies may come, my foes may come to eat up my flesh. They shall not succeed. They will do what? Stumble and fall. Why? Because he's encamped an angel around about me. Come on, somebody. Y'all better know you got an angel that's dispatched to you. You got an angel. You don't realize it. You may not see it, but there God's got an angel in your life. He's got somebody protecting you. He's got a shield of protection around you. Come on, somebody. That's where your strength is going to come from. The angels of the Lord encamp around about them that do what? Fear God. How many fear him? How many love him? How many love him? That means you got an angel that's protecting you. Even when you're not even aware, even, when, oh, I might preach a few minutes, uh, even when you don't even feel like it, when you don't even realize it, God's got an angel that's protecting you. God's got an angel that's undergirding you. Yes, he's got an angel that's coming around, that's in camp around you. Even though I, he, the, the enemy may rise up against me, my heart should not fear. I will be comforted in knowing that those of us who live a daily, daily in God's presence, you got an angel that's around you. 
Come on, somebody. That's why it's always good to go ahead and thank God even in the presence of your enemy. That's why it's always good to give God thanks even when you don't feel like it. That's why it's so good to give God some thanks because you can realize he's always with me. Yes, I don't have to wait until the problem come. You say, listen, I'm always remembering. You got to remind yourself every day that I'm always in God's presence. And I don't have to just call on him when I need him because I'm already, he's already there with me. Yes, he walks with me. He talks with me. Yeah, he tell me that I am his own. So when before even I get to a trial and a tribulation, even before I get to a heartache, even before I get to a test, I already know that he's right there with me yes yes those grace and mercy that walketh with me yes he walk with me and he talk with me tell me that I am his own somebody say hallelujah so the difference is is when God when you always in his presence you don't have to call him when you can you already know say listen just reach out and say Lord here I am I'm dealing with this situation and he's gonna give you the strength that you need uh, somebody say hallelujah it's a good thing to know that God is on your side. It's a good thing to know that he's walking with you. It's a good thing and to read, to realize that everywhere I am or everywhere I go, the strength of God is right there even in my mouth. Somebody say hallelujah. I dare you to just open up your mouth and say, Lord, I thank you for your strength. Lord, I thank you for being right there with me. I thank you for being right there even in my mouth. We often run to God in there when we experience and difficulties uh, but David experienced difficulties he said he realizes uh, I don't have to run to him he's already there he, he's already guiding me every day of my life and so when trouble comes his way he said listen God is already in my presence uh, God is already there uh, God is already there to handle my tests uh, he's right there to handle my situation uh, as believers we can now call on God uh, in the time of need uh, we can call on God God, uh, right there in the time of trouble. Uh, we don't have to live short-sighted. We don't have to de live in fear. Uh, we don't have to wait until we get up in the morning. We can say right now, uh, God is right there. Uh, late in the midnight hour, uh, I can open up my mouth and say, God, uh, I need you. Uh, before you call your friend, uh, before you dial 911, uh, you can reckon, oh, I feel like preaching the moment. Uh, you can recognize that God is right there uh, even in your mouth uh, somebody say hallelujah uh, I like what David says uh, he said one thing that I desired of the Lord uh, that I may seek after him uh, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord uh, that means I don't have to come in the physical house uh, that means he's in my temple uh, the temple of my of me uh, your temple is the body your temple is the spirit of the Holy Ghost uh, that dwells within you uh, and I may dwell in the house of the Lord uh, all the days of my life uh, and to behold the beauty of the Lord uh, he is not only there all around you but but he's right there in your mouth uh, somebody say hallelujah I was not just talking about brick and mortar, nah, but he's saying, listen, he's desired. I'm right there in your mouth. Huh? When I walk with you, you walk with me. That's why you got to be careful huh? what things you expose your God to. You got to be careful the company that you hang around. You got to be careful of the things that you do because you expose not only yourself, but you're exposing God to things that's not like of God. Huh? Somebody say hallelujah. Nah, you don't want, I don't need, listen, listen, I tell people often, I was telling my my brother the other day, I don't fear nobody because the only person I fear is God. Uh, you ain't got to watch me because the fear that I have and the reverential fear that I have of God is more than anybody else watching me. Uh, it's more than anybody else trying to figure out what I'm doing. Uh, why? Because I recognize that God knows my heart uh, and if I want his presence in my life, uh, I got to walk right. Uh, if I want his presence in my life, uh, I got to talk right. Uh, if I want his presence in my life uh, I gotta think right uh, I gotta think right uh, I gotta act right uh, somebody say hallelujah uh, I don't want to dispel his presence uh, I don't want to run him away from me uh, I don't want him to leave me uh, because if I'm doing right things uh, he said I'll never leave you uh, 
nor forsake you. I don't know about you, but I want to walk in God's presence. I don't know about you. Everywhere I go, I want him to be in my presence. I want him to know that I love him even in the dark. Even when I'm by myself, nobody's watching you. I want him to know. So in the time of trouble, he's already there. So when he's right there, he shall hide me. He shall hide me in the secret place of the Most High. And I'm going to dwell. Somebody need to dwell under the shadow of the Almighty. So when you're in his presence, even when the devil comes, he can dispatch the angels to tell that devil huh, to get thee behind me. Huh. Somebody say hallelujah. Huh. You need to understand huh, that the power that you have, huh, the Holy Ghost that you have huh, can put the devil to the run. Huh. Somebody say hallelujah. Huh. Even when you're strong, weak, huh, the devil can't get you down huh, because the strength of God huh, is right there in your mouth. Huh. Even when you're going through trials, huh, even when your tears are coming down your face, uh, even when you feel heartbreak, uh, even when you despair, uh, even when you despond it, uh, even when you're going through some agony, uh, even right now I'm fighting off some things uh, from what I saw about my mother, uh, but I recognize uh, that God is the strength of my life, uh, of whom shall I fear? Uh, God is the strength of my life. Uh, when I pray to him, uh, he will answer my prayer. Uh, somebody say hallelujah. I made up in my mind for God whatever you allow to happen I'm still going to love you whatever you allow happen I'm still going to praise you whatever you allow happen I'm still going to preach your word I'm still going to keep on singing somebody say hallelujah I recognize that God is with me I recognize I don't have to fear death Somebody is fearing death right now. But that's a good thing for some people. Somebody say hallelujah. I ain't talking about death all the time, but I'm not afraid of it. Somebody say hallelujah. Why? Because God took this thing out of death, took the power out of death. So when you die, one of these old days, you're going to get back up. You're going to bust the clouds. He's going to say, come my people. And the power that you possess uh, going to cause you to come back uh, and meet him in the air. Uh, somebody say hallelujah. Uh, so therefore uh, when I die in the Lord, uh, that's nothing but a transition. Uh, when we leave here, uh, that's just another chapter in our life. Uh, for one of these old days, uh, one of these old days, uh, one of these old days, uh, we're going back with him. Uh, one of these old days, uh, we ain't got to fight sickness no more. One of these old days, we ain't got to punch the clock no more. And then when I can look up towards heaven and say, when I see Jesus, I'm going to say amen. All of my trials, all of my sickness, all of my pain will be over. Do I have a witness in here? Are you looking forward to that day? Are you looking forward to that moment? You don't know when your time come, but that's what one thing that I'm looking forward to I ain't worried about my retirement I ain't worried about a gold belt I ain't worried about my retirement money my ultimate goal is to see Jesus somebody say ah I want to see Jesus ah want to see my father again ah we've got some loved ones over there somebody say hallelujah that's where my strength comes that's where I get my courage at that's when I say I'll run on run on I already know what the end's going to be. I already know. Lord, have mercy. I feel the strength of God. Why? Because I know my Redeemer live. When I start thinking about the goodness of Jesus and what he's going to do for us and what he's done for us, I think about the place that he prepared for us. He told us, let not your heart be troubled. Don't let it be afraid. If you believe in me, in my Father's house, 
gifts are many mansions. I don't know how long I'm going to live, but a hundred years is not ever eternal life. Yes, these few years that God is blessing us with cannot compare to eternal life. Somebody say eternal life is mine. Eternal life is yours. I don't know about you, but I want to see his face. All I want to hear him say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Come on up out. Come on up out of that world. I ain't got to worry about no bombs. I ain't got to worry about racism no more. I ain't got to fight bigotry no more. When I see Jesus, oh, that's where my strength comes from. That's where you should draw strength from. That's your strength. Strength like no other. Will we face trials and tribulations? Yes! But God is going to give you strength. Somebody say hallelujah. That's right. Get the strength that you need. He give you strength. Give you strength like no other. And the strength of God is reaching for you. He's going to give you the strength. Somebody say hallelujah. What do you do? I wait on him. I trust him. I trust him. How many going to trust him? Come on, trust him. Lift up your hands and just trust him. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Trust him. Your life is in his hands. And he can do just what he want to do. Don't you know he know better what you need than what you know you think you need? That's why you can say, Lord, you're my strength. Strength like no other. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God, I thank you for your strength. Strength right now. I want you to stand to your feet and allow God to strengthen your mind, strengthen your heart give you the fortitude that you need even in a dark place even in a difficult moment some may be dealing with something you everybody's not I don't like to talk doom and gloom all the time everybody's not dealing with something and if you're not just wait till tomorrow then something will come something will come that will cause you to say I need your strength but I came to tell you today, God can take the place of weakness in your life and God can step right in there and give you the strength that you need. Somebody say hallelujah. He can bless you with what, what no vacation can do for you. He can do for you what no friend can do for you. Come on, somebody. The things that we do are temporarily. The fun that we have is just temporarily. But he can give you the strength that will sustain you and that will keep you. And he can direct you. He can let you know, I'm your father. I'm your mother. I'll be your brother. I'll be your sister. I'll be your whatever you need. Here, take the role of whatever's missing in your life. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody say hallelujah. Then you can say, my God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory. Now, all of those needs are not just material things. It's just the strength that you need. David said, I would have fainted unless I believed to see the goodness of the Lord. Sometimes we just need to look up and live and look up to see where God has already brought us from. He's brought us all from a mighty long ways. All of us got a testimony, don't we? We all got a testimony. So the words of fame are not, it's not, it's saying, listen, it's not saying I was going to give up, but I was broken enough that I, I, I was broken. I was, I was despondent. Then when I had to look, my emotions was Drain, and then I had to look and start thinking of the goodness of the Lord. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, 
my what soul cries out hallelujah that's where your strength is somebody shout hallelujah right now shout hallelujah right now With one voice if you need the strength of God shout hallelujah I'm going to pray for you as I get ready to close it down I said something earlier I want you to remember this I wrote this down it was so profound we must believe to see and not see to believe did y'all get that I say we must believe to see and not see to believe in other words I gotta believe I gotta trust him before I can't even see it that's the whole purpose of that statement it's easy to believe that this is a flower when it's here but if that flower wasn't here you gotta believe it to see it somebody say hallelujah same with your faith same with what you're dealing with you may not see it, but you got to believe that you're going to see it. You may not see it tangibly. You may not feel it, but you got to see it to believe it. Somebody say hallelujah. Mother, reach hands to me. Yes, you are my strength. Strength like no other. Strength like no other. Reach as to me. You are my strength. Strength like no other. to me